this morning, the, last week, well, let, let me start back. Last week, um, I tried to give you a hint as to what I was going to preach on this week. And then after, uh, how many of you watched Wednesday night? How many of you? Pretty, pretty good, pretty good amount? Okay. So I gave you a big clue on what we were going to preach on Wednesday night. And I pointed to, did y'all see that pretty scene I had behind on the TV? Yeah, that, that's going to be my nap time this afternoon. Just going right back to that creek flowing. And the, are we, we don't have to do anything, right? Oh, Lord. Good. That's, nap is coming. Naps are important. Naps Amen. are refreshing. And if you may, may be caught Wednesday night, today we're talking about refreshing and how to be refreshed. How many of you need a refreshing? Not just, not just spiritually, but you need a, a refreshing physically. You, I mean, this has been a taxing year. Man. This has been a year that's uh, it's been uh, hard on, on the young and the old alike. Um, this, the virus that we've been going through is, has been uh, crazy. It's, um, it's caused a lot of things other than sickness. It's caused a lot of, of separation, right? Separating from your, your loved ones and your family. and your, you know, it's, it's caused a lot of different things other than death and sickness. It's caused a lot of uh, depression. You know, depression is on an all-time rise right now. Uh, I want to encourage you, though, that if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you don't have to live in a depressed state. You don't have to be there. You can have a time of refreshing. Uh, the Bible's clear that if we want refreshing, there's a, there's a formula to get refreshed. And I want to give that to you today. I want to give you, uh, this is going to be great. This is like an, an open book test. So um, the formula is in the, the Word of God, and we're going to unlock that. Uh, to be refreshed is amazing. Um, some of you, how many of you get refreshed when you go on vacation? Some, some of you do, right? Some of you actually get more tired on the vacation and have to come home and rest from the vacation. That happens, doesn't it? I mean, that really does happen. But there's a time when you're when you're out of your normal routine that a vacation can be really nice. Even yeah. if you're busy the whole time, it can be super nice that you're just able to to get away and to just to do fun things and or to do absolutely nothing. That can be refreshing as well. A long weekend. How many of you like to read? Any readers in the house? If you like to read a really good book on a rainy afternoon, it, man, that's awesome. Nothing, nothing can be beat that. That's refreshing. Vanessa likes a, it, her refreshing costs me money. She likes massages, so um, that's that's her thing. She she likes a good massage, and that. That usually costs me. It doesn't refresh me at all. It, uh, it plenishes me, but it's okay because she comes back in such a great mood. It's fantastic. Amen. Hey, that's, that's important, right? I hear you, my brother. Hey, can I get a real cut? What? I didn't say that. There it is. The Bible talks a lot about refreshing and how it comes about, and, and we're going to talk about that, how it comes about and where it comes from. Uh, but before we do that, let's begin with a word of prayer. And I want you to think about and ask the Lord as we pray, Father, open our hearts and let us receive the word so we can be refreshed. All right, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time that we have together in your house. Lord, we, we thank you for those that are watching online right now. Father, we, we give you honor and praise for them. Um, we were, uh, we're, we're meeting in one accord, whether we're in the building or whether we're not. Uh, we're in one accord with you, Lord. And we all need a season of refreshing. We all need a touch, a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost of God to fall not just on our sanctuary, but on all the sanctuaries across the nation. Father, we need a refreshing 
in the Spirit of God to touch us like never before. We've gone through a, a great trial this year, but Lord, we're going through it with You. We're not being left behind, and You've never forsaken us. You're right there with us. You know exactly what's going on, and You are not the author of confusion, Father, but You are the peacemaker. Father, You absolutely are the Prince of Peace. Your Son, You sent Him to bring peace into this world. So, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, Your Son, I declare peace in this nation. I declare peace, a time of peace, and a time of refreshing, not only for our congregation, but for everybody that's watching online as well. Lord, we thank You for a time of refreshing, and we give You all honor and praise, and it's in Your blessed Son's name, Jesus, we pray. The Savior's name. Amen. Amen. If you'll turn with me to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19 through 21, the book of Acts, chapter 3, I know a lot of y'all, you might wonder, why does he say that so many times, because I used to be like, not here, but I used to be in your seat, and I would be the one going, what did he say? What, what, I mean, I'm, I'm, I couldn't get it on the first time. I don't care how many times it, it takes the preacher three or four times before I realize, did he say Acts 3? Yes, he did. He said Acts 3, Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. So I'm, I'm not downing you. I'm telling you I feel for you because I've been where you are and I've been sitting there flipping while he's reading the Scripture going, I don't know where he... And then I can't concentrate on the Word. So if you want to know why I do that, it's very intentional. It's for you at home as well this morning. It's for you to know that we're in Acts chapter 3. And I also think that we rush the Word of God. We work, we, we, get, in a, we get in such a hurry to, to preach. We get in a, a, such a hurry to get you to the restaurants to beat the Baptist. It's ridiculous. We're Pentecostal people. Look, we're not, we're not supposed to be out of church till 2 o'clock anyway. Everybody knows that. I mean, you know, there's no, no diabetic suffering in the, in the middle of a Pentecostal service. It doesn't matter how you can wait on your own insulin shot, even. Huh? Hallelujah. <laughs> if you're Pentecostal, God takes care of you. My mom used to say it like this. I can put my roast in and God will cook it. It doesn't matter what degrees I put it on. It'll never burn. My roast and potatoes and carrots, and she would put all that in one pot, you know, and stick it. And she would say, I don't care if we're there three hours. It won't burn. God's cooking it. So that's what she... Now, she wasn't Pentecostal. That's the beauty of it. She already had faith in God. <laughs> we never had a burnt roast at my house, ever. It was always perfect. Actually, the longer it took, the better it was. Let that thing cook. It's all right. So I, I just want you to know, we get in such a hurry that we miss this time we have with each other and with God. For Him to, to, to hear the praises of your voice, to hear the, more importantly, to hear the praises of your heart. To hear the praises of your heart toward heaven. He needs this time like we need this time. And we are in Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. So I bet everybody's there by now. Alright, here we go. Repent! We are talking about refreshing. He's starting out with the word repent. It's pretty important. Get ready. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I hope y'all caught that this morning. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that in times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that He may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you there before whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of His holy prophets since the world began. Hallelujah. 
So how does it come? How does how do you be how do you get refreshed? I'm going to tell you the very first thing you do to get refreshed. If you are this is the formula that's in the Word of God. So get this this morning. If you want a time of refreshing in your life, the very first thing you have to do is repent of your sins. Amen. Amen. I was thinking, I, this preach is good. I don't care. You got to hear this. If you want a time of refreshing and time to settle down, your soul to settle, and for you to things to start getting back to normal, the first thing is you must repent. Now I know we all go to the Old Testament. We go to 2 Chronicles 7.14. How many of you heard that to you blue in the face this year? That if we humble ourselves, we pray, we seek God, we're this, we're this, He's going to heal ourselves and all that, right? That's a land covenant with Abraham. We love to use it though, don't we? Come on, you under a blood covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. You're on, you're not under a land covenant with, with Abraham. You're you know, you're you're grafted in. I'm not telling you that you're not, but I'm telling you this, you have a better covenant with God. Amen. You have a better covenant with God. It's a blood covenant. And this blood covenant is Jesus shedding his blood and dying on the cross that you might have a time and a season of refreshing. And that season lasts forever. It's called eternity. Amen. Wow, it's awesome. I love the Old Testament. I love that piece of Scripture. But I'm telling you, you need to hear this. If you want a time of refreshing and you're under a blood covenant with Jesus, you're blood bought by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, then you need to repent of your sins. Amen. That's easy. Just do it. What does repent mean? It just means to turn. Turn away from the garbage that this world gives you and turn toward the cross that gives you eternal life through Jesus Christ. The second thing it says is be converted. You need to believe. You need to be, be a believer. More than ever, people are looking for someone that can tell them how to get to heaven. Look, people are searching for heaven and they don't even realize it. They're going to dirty habits down the road to try to find their happiness. They're searching for Jesus though. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They're going to the nightclubs and the bars, but they don't realize they're trying to fulfill something. They're trying to fulfill a longing that only Jesus can fulfill. Yeah. And they're going to look in all the different places that the world offers. They're, look, it's not at the Alabama game. Ask Jason, uh, Jalen Waddle. Ask him if he was okay yesterday. He's undergoing surgery, right? We'll pray for you. Yeah. Anthony put that out there quick, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he got you, T. He got me, yeah. Because you haven't paid attention to I want to pray for that brother. Hallelujah. Yeah. And thank you, by the way. Um, it's, that's funny. I'm sorry. That was funny. Uh, even though it was a legitimate prayer, but I don't know if y'all were on group me, but he, he put a request for a pray for my friend Jalen. He's undergoing <laughs> leg surgery. Anyway, hey, moving on. So the, the second thing, first you repent. The second thing you need to be converted. You need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that He died for you. He rose again for you. And He made a way and He sits by the Father making intercession for you. Now what does that mean? It means He is literally your defense attorney sitting before the throne of God saying, hey, they belong to me. They're blood bought. They belong to me. They are mine. He came and died for you so He could sit there and tell the Father. Remember, it wasn't long after the creation when, when God actually re wanted to repent of making man. Do y'all remember that? That's right. It says in the Bible that it's in the man's heart to do to do evil continually. Gosh, that's what it says. So without Christ, that's what you would be. Look at what's happening in the world right now. We we remove Christ out of anything, it starts tainting and turning to garbage. Yep. Yep. Your school right. system. Amen. Come on. Come on. That's it, it. You take him out. And then you're going to get what's left. California holds signs up that says, we don't want God in our state. Well, guess yeah. what? It's burning to the ground. 
That's what's happening because you don't want Jesus Christ in your life. It will burn. By the way, this body's already condemned to death, but the soul don't have to go. Yes. It don't have to go to hell. It can go to a place where it was supposed to go to, and He died so you could get there. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Be converted. Believe. So here's your formula. The first thing you do, the very first thing is repent of your sins. That means turn. Turn from them. In other words, if this is if sin is this direction, you definitely turn this direction. Okay? And you walk away from that garbage. And you can do that today. The refreshing starts today. And it doesn't matter how many times you've had to ask. He's always got an ear toward you and waiting to hear from you. He loves you that much. He loves you that much. Refreshing comes from repentance. Refreshing comes, it, it begins, this is the formula, it begins to come because you believe you're converted. And the third thing is you have to be in the presence of the Lord. When you get saved, you're asking to be in the presence of the Lord all the time. Look, you don't need to come into church to find a shout. Ask Vanessa right. this week what she heard from the living room. Do you remember? You probably don't remember. She's not remembering a whole lot of stuff these days. But that's what, it's getting better, right? So we're getting better. But I just remember getting blessed and just giving the Lord a shout of praise. It might not have been in English. It doesn't matter. That was between me and Him. You can, look, you don't need to wait till Sunday to get a fill up. Do you hear me? You don't need to wait till Sunday to figure out that you're a Christian. Right. You don't need to wait till Wednesday night comes on for some, well, oh, I hope the church can bless me somehow tonight. Yeah. My goodness. How about waking up and being blessed already because you are above dirt and you know the Word of God. Amen. And this hasn't changed. And every day it's being fulfilled. Every single day you can see it. You, if you want to turn the news on, you can. Or you could just read this. It's the same news, but this is the real facts. Amen. This isn't fake news. This is real. And this happening right before our very eyes. Every single day. So the thing is, is that you have to find yourself in the presence of the Lord. I don't care what it takes. Do what it takes to get in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes that means removing yourself from people that are dragging you down. Yes, amen. Okay? Sometimes you have to remove yourself and get alone with God. Be in His presence and alone. Just be alone with Him. It's okay to be alone with Him. He wants nothing to do with your sinful ways except to fix it. Bask in His presence. It's a, it's a precious thing to do is to be in the presence of Almighty God. I've been in His presence for a long time, but I'm telling you there's times when you meet together as a family of believers where it is different because we are leaping and lumping our faith together all in one place. It's different. He says where two or three are gathered, right? That there's a reason that's written there. It's not... I don't always have to be alone to be refreshed. I can also be refreshed when I'm with you. We're going to get... I'm jumping ahead a little bit there. We're actually going to talk about that. It's part of the formula. The presence of the Lord. Basking in His presence. Proverbs 3, 7 and 8. Turn with me to Proverbs 3. Proverbs chapter 3. The writer here says it really well. 7 and 8. And I wasn't going to read 9 and 10 this morning until Anthony said what he did during tithe time. And then when he said that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to read 9 and 10 too. Why not? We're just following this one. Here we go. Proverbs 3, 7 and 8. It says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I will be health, oh, excuse me, it will be health to your flesh. Now look, we don't always get a lot of that in the Word of God. Most of the time we're talking about the soul of man, right? We don't get a whole lot that talks about our fleshly bodies, so you need to grab a hold of this one this morning. 
It says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Man, that's good. So, a lot of times when you're feeling down and you're, you're hurt, you're, you're, uh, you're aggravated, you need to realize that there is also a formula to feel better now. Part of your refreshing, part of your refreshing in your health of the flesh depends on being wise, not being wise in your own eyes. In other words, don't look at yourself to fix anything. Jesus is going to be the author of your, of your fixing. Okay? Yeah. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Again, it says depart from evil. And when you do these things, it brings health to your body. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to now. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. He said first fruits this morning. Do y'all heard him right? Mm -hmm. The first fruits of all, of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. New wine. I don't have time to, to preach that this morning about new wine, but you need to check it out. First of all, you don't put new wine in old wine skins. It'll bust. you got to be new. you got to be new to carry this type of wine. And you know, most people on earth, we always mess things up, right? They say the longer you wait to drink wine, the better it is, right? So we age wine on earth. But this is telling you this new wine. So you better look at new wine. Go check out what new wine is. Let's look at that but not right now. 1 Corinthians 16, 18, Paul says that brothers and sisters in Christ are, can refresh you. He, he, he's actually talking about a specific two or three people that came to him out of the church of Corinthians. They came to his aid. They came and refreshed him. It was a, it was, he had been pouring in the Word of God to them so much, so much that, hey, by the way, Preachers need preachers too. Mm -hmm. I need to hear the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I need for the Word to be broken over me. I've enjoyed, y'all, I have enjoyed Wednesday nights online. I have enjoyed it because y'all are breaking the Word over me. And it, that's a beautiful thing. Actually, the Word it says that. We read it last week. That the Word should be broken over the one giving the Word. Amen. Okay, that was for me. I'll take that. Paul says that brothers and sisters in Christ... Are, are refreshing. We preach about refreshing. Why? Because today's news, you turn it on and all you see is what? How many deaths today from the virus? That's what you hear. That's the first thing, the opening thing. They didn't tell you how many people survived it. They didn't tell you that. But they talk about the death a lot. I realize there's been a lot. And we've suffered it in our congregation. We've suffered. Our families have suffered that. Almost lost our associate pastor to, to COVID. So we understand what that is. We know what that pain is. We get it. I don't want to see it on the news every night. I'm tired of it. I don't even want to hear the word anymore. I don't want to see the next line. You know what the next thing is? Is who got murdered in, in California. That's the next thing. Chicago. They had 27 shootings last night. Well, that was down, actually. They're doing better. That's ridiculous. That's what you see on the news. Sickness, pain, wars, rumors of wars. It sounds like the Bible. I told y'all, y'all could get the news right here. But let me read this to you. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. through 5. This is what... And look, we're going to get to the good stuff. I promise you. I'm not going to leave you in the gutter, but we got to get there. So you can see this act of refreshing. How to get there. This is the formula. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. through 5. We've been in chapter 3 everywhere we've been so far. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5. It says, but, this, but know this, that in the last days, people say, do you think we're close to the end? Yes, I do. 
In the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. <laughs> Go to Walmart. I would have been whipped in front of God and everybody, and everybody around me would have been threatened by my, my folks if you acted cool in Walmart. Amen. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm just telling you right now, my mom would have been like, and you're next. Amen. She'll whip everybody in there. Yeah. Oh, but we're going to call social service to call them, honey. They're going to get whipped too. I was scared to death. That's a good thing. Hey, by the way, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Your parents are kind of the first glimpse of what Jesus looks like, God looks like to you, your dad. Okay? Disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy. Man, listen to this. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Am I running too fast or y'all good? We good. <clears throat> I don't want to go over it again either. <laughs> lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. <coughs> from this, well, I'm not going to read on. I'll, I'll stop there. You get it. Now let me give you the good news. This is the good news. And the refreshing starts at first repentance. It starts with converting. It starts with being in the presence of God. Those three things. And then you get to get in this good word right here. Hear the good news this morning. John, and you don't have to turn there. I'm going to go through these fast. If you're taking notes, just write them down. John 16.33 these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. That's the word of Christ. Do you hear me? That's the good news. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's the good news this morning. Yes. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. And those who are called according to His purpose. That is the good news this morning. Yes. Amen. That brings refreshing. And I'll finish with this. Isaiah 40. 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Did you hear me? Amen. Amen. I'm looking at you. But those, look, she wants to be well right now. And y'all know her. She's got one speed that's wide open. And I've had to tame her like a lion. And it's, it's, it's troubling. I'm just going to tell you because she wants to be well now. And by the way, she serves a God that can do that. Yep. Yes. And she Amen. knows it. Amen. And she knows it. So it's me, the one that's trying to keep her going at a pace that the doctors have asked kindly. But listen to this. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. They shall walk and not faint. Have you ever wondered why it says run before walk? I'm going to tell you because when you're young, you can run. But the older you get, the wiser you get, you realize that you need to slow down a little bit. Well, how are your body going to anyway? Whether you like it or not, it's going to kind of time out on you a little bit. The check engine light comes on at 50, I think. I mean, I just feel that way. I checked my mileage the other day and it's hello. <laughs> Woo. I mean, even with the old changes and everything, you know, you anyway. I'm just saying you you can run and not grow weary, but the older you get, it says that you can walk and not faint. And hey, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful yes. we can still yes. walk and not yes. faint. Amen. I want you to hear this good news 
Because this is how you get refreshed. The, the refreshing comes from first repentance. Turn from your sin and get rid of it today. Y'all are like, well, is he talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. I don't think I've sinned. I'm definitely talking to you then. Because if you don't think you're sinning, you, you're probably in a bad place. Yep. Oh, but we don't have to sin anymore. We can be perfect like Christ. Uh, good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's that's a uh, that's crazy theology right there. Yeah. That's crazy theology. Yeah, hey, and it's being taught. It's being taught. Listen to me when I tell you that you repent, you get converted. <laughs> Look, repenting is converted. Be in, in the presence of God and then get in His Word and dig out what I just read to you. Search out those things and I promise you, you will have a moment of refreshing that you need so desperate right now in this time. Look, I know, and I've heard it probably from you and you've probably heard it from me, that you're just ready for 2020 to be over. But I want you to think a little differently. I want you to think differently right now. I want you to realize that you have a little bit of October left you have two months to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In this year. This year has been tough, but it doesn't have to end the way it started. Amen. And if we need a refreshing, then we will find our refreshing in the Word of God. And by being together, like Paul said in the, to the Corinthian church, you have refreshed me with your just with your presence. Can I tell you, I get refreshed on Sunday mornings when you're here. I get refreshed because I see your faces. That's a time of refreshing. So let me encourage you this morning. Don't give up on 2020. Don't give up on the year. It has been a tough one. I guarantee you. But it's not over. And we don't have to walk out of this thing going, man, I can't wait for this year to be up. You know what you're doing? You're throwing away opportunity. You're throwing away opportunity to serve the Lord. You're, you're throwing away two months that somebody might need to be saved right now because guess what? People are listening. Right now there's more hurt than there's ever been and they're looking for something. I just told you at the beginning, they're looking in all the wrong places, but they're waiting for a word of truth. Amen. And it right. comes from you guys because you know the truth. Don't give up on this year. We have an awesome time of Thanksgiving. We have an awesome time to celebrate the birth of Christ. We have some good things. And yes, next year is going to be better. Well, how do you know that? Because Jesus, if he, if he comes back, it's going to be better. <laughs> We're, it's going to be better. If you know the Lord, it's going to be better. But you can be refreshed now. And it starts with repentance. I ask you to think about those things as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you that you, through your word, you've given us a formula to, to be refreshed and to take the stress away, to take the anxiety away, to take the pain away, Lord. You have given us your word, your precious written word. Word that is inspired and written by God through man's hands. And refreshing is within the pages. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this morning we will do the things necessary to get that refreshing. Those that are tired, worn out, sick. Oh, that's all of us, Lord. At some point, we need a refreshing. So we ask through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You said that the Holy Ghost would be our teacher, that He would lead us into all truths. And it's written right here in this Word. I ask by the power and the anointing of God that it is pressed into us this morning. Not impressed, but pressed. Literally pressed into us that if we want to be refreshed we can and we've been given the formula and we thank you through your word God we honor you this morning
we give you praise and thanksgiving for who you are, Lord. Let us see the rest of this year as an opportunity and not a dredge on society. Let us look forward to things again. In Jesus' name.